All right, let's start with um, lesson eight. So um, lesson eight is about 2D uh, physical processes. So all the processes we discussed in um, uh, lesson six on like advection, um, dispersion, diffusion, all these are the same. Process itself are the same, but in in um, here in this section um, or in this lesson, we are trying to introduce a an additional layer of complexity in two D. One is uh, you are adding; we are adding another dimension. So we not just have a one D case; um, we also have another dimension X Y. So there's a bit of uh, adding a little bit complexity in that. Um, Sense, but also we are introducing the heterogeneity concept. Um, that is, um, the heterogeneity meaning the the spatial distribution of of the subsurface properties or cross media property are not even. Meaning somewhere you might have, for example, very high porosity permeability, and somewhere else you have low porosity permeability. Or somewhere you have clay lenses, um, which can absorb a lot of um, material, but then somewhere else you have more, like sandstone, which is largely non-reactive. Or somewhere you might have carbonate that can dissolve out relatively fast. So there are a lot of different type of heterogeneities, and uh, here, um, since we are talking about physical processes. We are mostly relating everything to the differences in physical properties. So you probably at this point you have already um, reading through the um, online text about the concept of homo uh, homogeneity uh, and heterogeneity, and also the geostatistical measurements of um, heterogeneity, like mean uh, variance. Correlation length. So mean will be essentially defining the average, um, for example, average permeability of a system. Um, and the variance is a is a quantity that measure how big is the variation. If you have small variance, you mean meaning you have a relatively small um, range um, surrounding the mean. If you have a larger one, meaning you have larger uh, variance. So um, and especially for permeability, for example, values of permeability usually vary by orders of magnitude in um, in natural systems. So a lot of time when we talk about permeability or um, connectivity, we're talking about um, the variance, the mean of log permeability, the, the variance of log uh, permeability. And also, um, correlation lens defining how at what Length scale, the different properties are related. Um, so you can go back and think about these concepts, and these are important concepts. There are uh, you. We can have a whole lesson of geostatistics. Uh, geostatistics actually, it's offered in um, this department. Um, so what do we talk about here is really just scratch the surface, give you some concept of that. And if you're interested, and if it's something that you are going to use a lot later on, you're encouraged to dig into the textbook details, software to um, have more lens um, um, learning, uh, more in-depth learning in terms of these uh, geostatistical measures. So here, um, the, the, what I'm going to do today um, is really trying to look at um, example in lesson eight, which is kind of adopted from one of the papers our group, uh, my group published a couple of years back. So we have a uh, um, um, one of my graduate student we. We set up um, these columns, a set of a suite of columns, having the same, um, like total mass, or almost the same. We try to keep it as much as possible the same. So the total mass of two mineral, one is magnesite, which is a, a, a reacting mineral. Another is um, um, quartz.
reports, which is considered as non-reactive. It's still reactive, but it's reactive. It's dissolving so slow it doesn't. It, at a time scale, we consider it doesn't really matter. Um, so in that experiment, we had uh, uh, columns which is three D, but here we kind of adopt it as a two D examples. So you can still you can still go back and look at that um, paper and uh, details about converting between two D and three D. But to keep it simple, here we are really just looking at two columns, the two extreme cases. One is a mixed case, have uniform distribution of everything. The other is um, we call it one zone case, have the magnet side in the middle, as you can see here in Figure Four that uh, um, everything is clustered in that magnetized zone. And we have measurement in terms of the physical property of the column. Um, we know the volume fraction. We know mass. And then we measure what's coming out of these columns. Um, so this will be, you can consider this lesson is like one step of the whole um, process. Later on, we will have another lesson focusing on the, the reaction, the distribution processes in these two columns. This session, we are only going to focus on the physical processes um, of these two columns. And I'm giving you this table, um, which are the physical property columns. You have a magnetized zone, MG zone, cross zone. You have these, um, like the, uh, dispersivity, which is actually we obtained by um, reproducing tracer data, tracer test data. And uh, we have alpha L, alpha T. We have um, effective permeability, average porosity. For the one zone case, we also have the porosity of the uh, magnetized zone and porosity of the cross zone. So, OK, this is not quite, this should be QTZ. OK, so um, let's go through. So you can read this text. And what I'm asking you to do is essentially, first of all, in order to set it up for both columns, for the mixed one, it's actually, if you set it to 1D, it should more or less give, it should give you the same um, calculation. Um, but we want to compare both in 2D, so um, we set up it actually in 2D. Now, so th before you do any input, you will need, just like in the 1D uh, situation, you will need to do some calculation in terms of the property of different zones. And in this case, because you have 2D, you have different zones, it actually ends up being a little bit more com complicated calculation. So in question 1, 2, and 3, 4, they are mostly asking you to calculate um, for the um, like some of the key parameters, uh, effective permitted, and so what is the permitted of the individual zones, um, the volume fraction of the zones in the two columns, um, and then you have you will also need to give it the pressure gradient for the column. Um, resident time of the column, all that. And then at the end, so 1 to 4 is asking to calculate all that. And then 5 and 6, before you set the um, crunch flow simulation. And then 5 and 6 is setting the, the crunch flow calculation and then look at the flow field and then look at the, um, uh, the concentration, uh, the, the, the bromide breakthrough. Again, it's it's non-reactive processes. All right, so I'm assuming the, at the time you are listening to this video, um, you have already went through the online solution one to four, or at least you have tried your first by yourself first, and then do some do some calculation, and then you compared what you have with um, the solution to. Uh, question one to four. If not, I suggest you go back and and look at it again. So just you you have a bit of kind of background. All right. So I'm going to focus on here on the um, setting the two columns. One is a uh, homogeneous column. The other is a one zone column. So let's look at a mixed column first, which is uniform column. And 
and what I'm having here is again okay, sorry about that I'm going to open in a notepad okay so I'm giving you essentially a blank um, file except uh, some of the runtime information is already there now what do you have here is for example all these uh, gray box now you have 2d so again like just like we did in one do you need to tell the code what is your domain what is your system right so in the um, I think let me see I didn't really tell you how many group blocks I want you to set Oh, okay so okay I did see that 2d system has a size of 25 millimeter by 100 millimeter okay that's fine but I think I didn't tell you the size the resolution Maybe I will put it here so it's a little bit. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm kind of messed it up. Oh, I don't know what's happened. But anyway, I need to clean this up. Looks like. But see, here I'm going to add some just run the simulation at the resolution of at the grid block resolution of. one millimeter by one millimeter so this is actually give you the resolution now what you are going to do here is actually this is a question this is kind of messed up but this is a question five and six um you will be looking you will be setting up the system so first thing you need to set up is your domain we have 25 millimeter by 100 millimeter so if it's a resolution one millimeter by one millimeter it's a, the number of grid box would be 25 in one direction then 100 in the other direction so the first thing you kind of need to tell the code the the system is how many grid block you have right so for example I will again put in the distance distance units let's do millimeter because that's the resolution millimeters and then you would have x zone x zones you have 25 and then you have the Y zone. So Y zone is the longer one. You have a hundred grid box, and you have one. Right. So these are your um, system um, twenty-five by hundred. So the system know you have this, this is your domain size, and uh, since this Y zone is in the long one, so it's in the flow direction. So keep in mind in mind that the flow direction so your inlet would be like in the y zone of zero and then the outlet goes cell would be in the y zone 101 so keep that in mind so that's your domain and then we kind of need to tell the system what is your um what is your system and uh, how is the property of your system so let's first do porosity in that column if you look back into this okay so in the mix so both of them have average porosity 0.44 um, so you will be putting in porosity and maybe here we be since it's a non-reactive one let's do this time for fixed porosity which is 0.44 it's a homogeneous case so every, everywhere is the same and so then we need to set up the flow 
right, the flow is related to the gradient, um, pressure gradient, and then um, so we will need to do a few things just like what you did before for the 1D case, except now you are doing 2D. So again, we're putting time units. Let's say this is for seconds. And then you have distance units, which is in meters. And then, again, we are going to specify um, the pressure gradient uh, permitted values, so we are going to do calculate flow. We say that that's true. Let's just give enough space. And then you would have permeability x, which is 8.26 e minus 13. This is what you have um, actually in the that that they given to you. If we go back and look, the effective permeability for mixing is. 8.26 times 10 to minus 13. And same for permitted y. And here you would, so the x, y here is specifying the different direction, permitting different directions. But I also want to set a no flow boundary at the at the direction that is in the um, a direction parallel to the flow, right? So here I need to specify, for example, sorry. These two lines are for the default permit, and the, but I also need to set the permeability for, you know, uh, when we have the column, and we specify in the the y direction. Actually, if you think about, the x is your um, in the figure in that figure four or five, we have the two image of the two columns. X is what you have in the horizontal permit. Uh, transverse flow, y is a direction that is um, perpendicular to the, parallel to the flow, I'm sorry. Um, so then in that case, you actually will need to specify um, all the x, y, like the, the, the values to be, we want that the flow doesn't go out of the column. So you kind of need to have no flow boundary, or you z have zero permeability in the two gray box, in the two line of gray box, one to one, which is x, and one to 100. That's specifying in the left hand side of that line. So it's x is one. And then your y will be from grid block 1 to 100. z is just one grid block, so z 1 to 1. And the same for um, the same for the, the other the other side, which is two, 25 to 25. right? And then you have 1 to 100 again. And then one one. That's uh, that's 
that's essentially um, let me just write it there this is no flow boundary right in the direction per perpendicular to the flow so essentially you're saying okay point B is infinite is infinitely small so you are not going to have flow flowing out in the x direction at the two boundaries all right so that's for the two boundary and then we need to specify pressure for the so, so for the inlet side to the outlet side um, and we did if you look at the solution to question one to four so there's one question about what is the pressure what should be the pressure gradient based on the permeability and the flow field, the flow velocity, which is every flow velocity is 3.6 meter per day. What do you need? So that is um, specified. So you'll be putting pressure um, using the number calculated is 5,060. And that will be an outlet, right? So you have zone. One to twenty five. That's actually I'm sorry, that's in the inlet. So that's specifying the pressure in the go cell um just before you have set exact as the first grid block. So it's one to twenty five, um y is zero zero and z is one one and then we should fix that. Right? And then the other end in outlet, you should have zero. And again, zone would be 1 to 25. But now you are doing 101 to 101, meaning it's in the go cell, just outside of the last grid block. And this is again 1 to 1, and then fix. So that's for the flow flow grid block, that's um, keyword block. You are specifying essentially the units and then you will say calculating flow and you that you give it permitted values. You specify here is um, no flow boundary in the direction um, at uh, uh, parallel to the flow. And then you have um, pressure gradient in the direction that is uh, the in, in the inlet and outlet. So that should give you um, the flow velocity in 3.6 meter per day. All right, so that's the flow. And then um, transport, we need to specify the transport grid block. Okay, so for transport grid block, we talked about before whether we need would it be something like um, things related to diffusion, dispersion, these parameters. But again, let's start by doing the units again. Time units, you would have seconds, and then distance. Distance units would be Maybe we do centimeters this time, because in the, I believe in this dispersivity value is giving centimeters. Okay, so yeah, that's in centimeters. So um, you specify units, and then you'll be specifying diffusion, fixed diffusion. And in the paper, we talk about using the fixed diffusion of 6.342 minus 6, so we are going to use the same centimeter square per second in the units for diffusion for all the different species. And actually here in Twister test, you only have one species. And then we are again are going to s do the cementation factor, or cementation exponent. And we often specify that as 1.0. And then you need dispersivity value. Okay. 
so for just specificity, since here you have two dimensions, you actually would need two different dispersivity values, alpha L and alpha T. Right, so in the um, alpha L, you need to have, L is in the direction that is um, parallel to the flow. And in the Z, in the direction that are perpendicular to the flow, you have you have smaller values. Let's look it up here. So you have alpha L and alpha T. Alpha L is larger because it's in the direction uh, parallel to the flow. This is in the direction transverse to the flow. Okay, so. Um, in here, when in, in the example, our x is a direction that is perpendicular, for, so it's, it should be 0 0.005. And in direction that is parallel to flow, it should be 0 0.05 in, in centimeter. Alright, so that's the transport properties. We have transport, we have discretization. Meanwhile, we don't need to specify, but we already specify uh, porosity. We could just specify the mineral, but, but, but as long as you specify the mineral, you will need to have all the chemicals and species that uh, go with it. Um, so for this one, because everything is homogeneous, we don't have to specify. As long as you specify porosity, and we are focusing on physical processes, so we don't really need to sp specify the individual minerals. Now your primary species will be bromide, tracer. Um, second species we don't have to specify. And now you will need um, to specify inlet condition. So your inlet condition would be um, what you are injecting. Um, so again, let's specify units would be, we actually can use molar, I forgot in the previous lessons, you, which is the same as more per liter. If you, you can't do m more dash L but you, if you write molar, then the code takes it. And then your temperature, again, let's assume it's 25. And then you would have the bromide concentration, which in the question is specify a tracer test of 1.21. 1 0 E minus 4 molar. So that's the inlet condition, and if we don't specify, so in the inlet you don't, we don't specify. There's no um, no solid phase, and suppose that we don't need to specify, but then we also will need to specify initial conditions, which would be um, again let's use it to be consistent. We use units of molar temperature. 25. That's the initial in the comes there's almost no um, bromide at all. So this will be your um, inlet and the initial. So these are your two conditions. We didn't really specify any solid phase um, because This is physical process. We don't need to consider the the, the chemical components, but then you are we already specified the porosity value, which is 0 0.44. So the code would just assume the solid phase will be one minus porosity, which is 0 0.56, um, and then it was it will assume it's non-reactive. So it has does have by default. So then here we can specify this con inlet and initial can specify initial conditions, which is um, initial 
And here you need to specify all the grid block because all grid block has the same um, initial condition, right? So you specify from inlet, uh, inlet and so inlet will be specified in the boundary condition. You initialize this everywhere, so you, you relatively actually just have clean water. But you also need to specify what is the boundary condition. Let's put all it together. Boundary condition. Let's put initial and boundary condition together. Just kind of group information. So boundary condition, now because you have two dimensions, so you actually would need um, two boundary conditions. So before, when we had 1D, we have we do use like X begin, X end, Y begin, Y end. So here we will say X which is inlet, and then you would have flux. And x and you have initial. So everything is flux um, in the boundary condition we specify y y and it really matter is is um, is a y because x in the x direction is no f no flow boundary so you don't have flow coming anyway so it but you do need to specify both um, so essentially it's a uh, because the flow is in the y direction from y begin which is in the inlet uh, and then y end is in the outlet but we use flux so it would be your special initial and anyway, whatever flowing out of the system now so that's a boundary condition um, then we also need to specify yeah, we do need to specify the output. To, for example, you need to decide how many time series you want in, in which grid block, and uh, how many sp how frequent you want the spatial profile, how long you want simulation to run, right? So um, this will be in the this will specify how long you will run the simulation essentially when we put in the spatial profiles, spatial profile. Let's do, for example, uh, maybe 0.2 days in total, and we sample a little bit more frequent earlier than later about that um, point, because we calculate the resident time is actually much smaller than that. Resident time is probably, I believe, in the order of minutes or something. Okay, so um, that's so z by specifying this, the code will be run into point two days. We don't want it to run too long because now we have instead of hundred grid blocks, we have two thousand and five hundred grid blocks. So if we specify too long, it might run for too long. And then let's look at how many grid blocks do we need. Time series. Let's say if you want the, for example, middle of the column in the outlet, you can specify. So you have 25 grid blocks in the x direction. The middle one will be 13, right? So maybe you will do break through curves 13 dot out and then you will specify why where it is you want to sample so that's 
in x direction 13, in y direction is at the end of the column, which is 100. So x, so z direction is always 1. That's time series. And then you have time series. What, what do you want to um, put in the time series of the Bergson curve? That or you need to specify the, which is bromide. And also you can specify time series interval. How often do you want it to come out? And let's say you want it 4, you want it 10. Sometimes you want to adjust a little bit, just so you have enough resolution in terms of time. Because the code actually calculates everything um, adaptively, so its the time steps are not even. When things change fast, it takes very small time steps. When they reach a steady state, it takes big strides. So um, later on, it could be running really fast, but early on, like in the time step might be in the units of 10 to the minus, for example, 10 days or something like that. So it's very uneven. And you want to, sometimes you might need to run a couple of times if you find your reserve resolution not high enough. But anyway, this is something you can check. Okay, so let's check about just check go through everything to make sure there's no errors pumping out. And we filled all the grid box. We don't need second species, we don't need gases. Um we have initial conditions specified and that's the initial condition it's the same name of inlet. The boundary condition, okay, just let's tr try to run it to see if it works. Mixed to D dot in. Okay, it looks like it runs. Hmm. Was it running? Look at the output file. Looks like too, it's finished too fast to me. Um, maximum time step, distance. Okay, looks like it, I mean it's it didn't do the time stepping. Let's go back and see if there's potential something wrong with it. Let's see if there's any information here. So it reads in until pressure of this. So it looks like it reads until pressure. I don't think it's because of the empty line, but let me just fix it. One okay, everything is under condition, condition inlet, condition outlet. Let me just make sure in the input file. Time.
clean up things a little bit. Time units. Let's see. Okay, everything looks good to me. Let's just try it again. Um, interesting. Okay, so it's example 8.1 mixed 2D. Hmm, so it looks like it stops somewhere in the middle without finish running. Depreciation of initial boundary condition successfully completed. Just check. Let's just check everything. Lesson eight title runtime. We are specifying. Let me make it database, and we do have the database. Okay, yeah, we do have a database here. Output days spatial profile time series breakthrough dot out thirteen hundred And then you have time series print bromide interval four. It's all correct. Transport seconds centimeters. Fixed diffusion cementation exponent one point zero. Dispersivity. And then you have positive fixed, which is 0 0.44 discretization. Distance units, millimeters. Exxon 25, 1. Okay, let me just check. Let me open. I search for X, so just want to make sure everything I have is correct. Right. Okay. So this is correct. Y is one hundred. One number of cells spacing all right flow seconds meters calculate flow two eight point two six eight point two six default Compete X to this 
specifying the no flow boundaries in the two um, no flow boundaries pressure maybe I need a pressure default just to because this is okay I part let me just try this pressure is 0.1 default everywhere. It shouldn't really matter. Um, Cause here we specify in the boundary, so it do need some values um, in the middle of like in other group objects as initial value. Do you think that's let's try this, let's try if that's a problem. Mm. Oh, not this one, I'm sorry. Example eight point one mixed two D dot in. Okay, so again it stopped here. Let me run the other one that is not blank that I actually did it before. Okay, that's the other one, that the not blank one. And I deleted everything and we just filled in here. So, just to make sure. 2D dot in. To make sure that one is running. Okay, this one is running. So, if we compare the two. We probably would tell the difference. Okay, so this is a running. Um, for the homogeneous case, it's coming out the first time. I'm curious what's the difference. Let me just open this one. It's essentially the same. Except I, I call this essentially a different name, but that should make should not make a difference. Almost done. Point one. So we have another point one to go. But in any case, you see that. Then let me open both. Let's call this blank. Just to be different.
Okay, so I have the two side by side. Let's do that. This is a prank. That's not the prank one. Lesson. Okay, runtime force, skimmers force. Okay, I did a scream output. 110, one for that shouldn't make a difference. Output days. I change a little bit the parameter, but this shouldn't really matter. Uh, begin. Okay, so I changed boundary conditions. Inlet flux. Inlet. Okay, I don't think these make a difference. Transport. Flow. That here, I miss the keyword zone. Let me just so maybe the code doesn't re recognize it. That's why, probably. Okay, this one is done. Okay, now I fix this problem. Let's just try it again within blank. Example 8.1 mixed 2D blank dot in. Now it's running. Okay, so that's a lesson. You are not supposed, okay, that. Um, so the problem was when I specify that uh, permeability is a no flow boundary. Every time when you specify uh, the permitted values for different grid box, you should have a keyword zone before that. Um, and then without that, the code couldn't recognize it. So it's an error message even just doesn't come up um, to tell you that. So we compared what we did was essentially, OK, when I compare this one with the uh, the ones that I did not delete everything and was running, then I see I missed this. Okay, so hopefully this this mistake will help you remember. It's very important to have the zone there. But in any case, we are done with a mixed case. Um, and then what I'm trying to point you to is that uh, okay, for example, now we can already look at probably velocity. We can look at velocity, which should give you x, y, and um, x velocity as these. These are so the main flow direction is y, right? So it really should be the flow direction. It should be flow is everywhere in y. It shouldn't be um, the main flow. But then these ones, x, you would have some small numbers randomly fluctuating. Yeah, that's fine. Don't panic when you see that. It should have, because the 2D should have. Um, x, y, both velocity in x, y, but the x velocity should cancel out because we have no flow boundary. That's the velocity. Um, and then you have, uh, you are supposed to have, okay, the, the breakthrough 13.1 should be coming out. Uh, for the mixed column, it doesn't really matter. It should be in outer, everything is even. So one grid block actually can represent all the different grid blocks in outlet because you have a homogeneous case. In the heterogeneous case, you actually will need um, to kind of flux averaged um, breakthrough curve, which we will be talking a little bit later. Now, I'm going to stop here because this this video is al already one hour, and I, I don't want it to be too long. So let me fin 
let me just close this one and pack everything up for this unit and then I will do another short one for the one zone case. Okay. 